Welcome to part four of our questionnaire slash survey taking application. If you've been following the series the whole time, you know that we have really explored and dived deep into how to create an application with Laravel using all the proper relationships, using databases, doing everything that we need. In this final episode, let's go ahead and take care of the last couple of things that I want to show you before we call it quits. The first one is due to this page right here. Right now, yes, we've got a way to create a questionnaire, but I have no way of knowing what questionnaires I already have. So let's create a new section here where we properly show all of the questionnaires that this user has. Additionally to that, I would like to display what would be called a share URL, basically the URL that they're going to copy onto an email or text message so they can send it out to their friends and say, hey, go ahead and take the survey for me. That way I know what the most popular answer will be. Let's go ahead and take care of that now. This view that we're taking a look at right now is just simply our home.blade. So let's go ahead and pull that open. That's home.blade.php. So we've got a card right here. Let's go ahead and duplicate that card and start to modify it. First thing is I do know I need a little bit of spacing because otherwise the cards will be touching. Let's add a little bit of margin top four. Let's change the header to my questionnaires. And then I don't need any of this. This is not relevant at this point. And in my body, this is where I'm going to iterate through all of my questionnaires. Now, before I can do that, though, I need to actually pass it through from the controller. Let's go to my home controller. And right now, here it is. This is the view of home. I need to go ahead and grab all of the questionnaires for this user. We'll save that to a variable of questionnaires. And how do we grab the authenticated users questionnaire? Well, just like that. We'll say authenticated user. Give me all of your questionnaires. It's as simple as that. And then we'll simply pass it through to the view. So we'll compact all of my questionnaires like so, and we are good to go. So this will only display this user's questionnaires to this user. This takes care of the fact that different people will have different questionnaires that they're going to be allowed to use. So let's head back to my view. And here we're going to need a for each, where we're going to iterate through each of the questionnaires and display a nice list group. So let's go ahead and actually wrap this in an unordered list with the class of list group. And then inside of here is where we'll have the for each. So we'll say for each questionnaires as questionnaire. And then let's go ahead and end for each. So my list item will need a class of list group item. And then for now, let's go ahead and just have an anchor tag where we actually have the path to the questionnaire. This should be something like questionnaires slash and then the ID of the questionnaire. We'll simplify this in just a second. And then for now, let's go ahead and output out the questionnaires uh, title like so. All right. What does that give us? Just like that. We've got this. And now when you click on it, you can visit the questionnaire. OK, let's do a small round or a factor right here. And it has to do with this path right here. One quick little tip that I can show you here is that sometimes it's very useful to add a helper method to your models where a model can basically tell you what the address is to itself. In this particular case, this is what I'm looking for. And this would take the shape of the following. We'll go to the questionnaires model. And I usually add this at the top of the relationships. I usually leave all of my relationships at the bottom and then all of my helper methods and all of my query scopes and all that, that all stays on the top. So let's add a new public function here for path. And all this needs to do is return basically this exact same thing. I'll go ahead and actually copy it. I'll bring it in here. So I'll go ahead and wrap this part in quotes. And then at this point, we don't need to echo anything like that. We are in PHP. So it would just look like this. However, questionnaire in this particular instance, because we are inside the model, would just simply be this. So this ID. Now, if you want a full qualified path, we can cut that out and we can wrap that using the URL helper. So now this gives us the full path to this questionnaire. All I would need to do at this point then is instead of having all of this and having to construct this every time, I could just simply call path like so. So I think this is a great refactor because it allows you to always and easily generate a full URL to a particular resource. Now, if we go back here, we'll hit refresh. Everything works exactly the same. Take the time to go through all the different views, find any of the places where we use this and replace it with this new 
help or function. But I'll leave that up to you. I'm not going to bore you with how to do that. Now, next, let's take care of that share URL that I was talking about. Let's add a div here. Let's add a little bit of margin top with MT2. And then in a small share URL, this might be too big anyway. We'll see what happens. Then we'll add a P tag with an anchor tag. And my anchor tag will basically be the share URL. So it's a perfect place to reuse one of these helper functions. Let's add another one here. Let's call it public path. And then this is going to return a slightly different one. This is actually one that's a little bit more complicated. This is going to be return. We'll go ahead and wrap it up again in the URL. And the string starts with slash surveys. Slash and then the ID. So this ID. And then if you remember, we need to have a dash. So we'll go ahead and add a dash. And then we need the slugified version of our title. So we can use str. Now, in this particular case, we do need to import str. You need to use this one right here, the illuminate support str. So when I do this automatically, it will create the import statement up here at the top. Make sure that you add that line if your IDE doesn't add it. Here we'll call slug, and then we'll pass through this title. Just like that. Now, the reason why we didn't have to import str in our views is because our views don't have a namespace. So it simply just defaults to the alias. A little bit outside the scope of this, but I do have a Laravel 6 advanced series that talks about the service container. And if you understand the service container, you kind of understand how that would work. But let's go ahead and leave this as is. And this is now our new nice public path. So back here, whenever I'm creating a link to this new share URL, again, all I need to do is use that. So we'll go ahead and echo out my questionnaires public path like so. And then inside of here, I can simply actually just show the public path itself. I think that'll be okay. Like so. What does that look like? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So if I click on it, of course, it takes me to the other view, the one where you can actually fill it out. Pretty cool, right? All right. So the last thing is maybe this should be bold. Let's add a class here. Should be font weight bold. Like so. There we go. All right, so this is pretty cool. So ultimately, the user can just grab this, copy it, and send it in an email to a blast to all of their people. If they wanted to edit the questionnaire, then they would click on this link. This takes them to the place where they can actually edit it. So speaking of editing this, that's sort of the next thing I want to take care of. What if I added this question, but I no longer want this question? Why don't we add the flow to delete a question? At first glance, it should be pretty straightforward. However, you got to remember that each of these answers is a different entry in the answers table. So if you were to delete just a question, you're left with all of these answers that don't have any questions associated with them. So we need to take care of the answers, make sure we delete all of those, and then we'll take care of everything else. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the correct view. I'll close everything up, and that is going to be my question as show. The questionnaire show that blade. There we go. Okay, so a card has a header, a body. There's also a footer. Let's add it right now. We'll say card footer. And in my footer, I want to have a delete request. Let me refresh your memory about delete requests. The only two methods that you can use in a form are post and get. Anything else, patch, put, delete, all of that needs to be faked. So here's how we do it. Let's add a form. Now for method, we will need post. That's the only thing we can do. However, we can override that with a nice blade method, which is method. And to this, we can pass through a delete. So this will give us a delete request. Let's go ahead and also have a CSRF token. We can't forget that. And then let's add a button of type submit. And let's add some classes to it just to style it nicely. Let's do BTN. Let's do BTN small. That way it's a nice small button. And then BTN outline danger. How about that? And then for text on this, we'll do delete question. What does that look like? There we go. We've got a nice little button here. It does the hover state and everything for us. So this is going to submit a form. It doesn't have any values in it, but that's okay. What is my action going to be? Well, if you remember, when I add a new question, check out the address up here. It's questionnaire slash one, meaning it's a nested resource. So the parent is the questionnaire. And then we've got the nested resource, which is questions. 
and then slash create. So let's replicate something similar to this. I'll go ahead and copy it and we'll modify it. We'll put it in here. It needs to start with a slash. So it's gonna be questionnaires and then instead of a one, I need my questionnaire ID. That's easy enough to get. We do have a questionnaire and we'll just grab its ID. Then we're gonna to go to slash questions and then do I need anything else after that? Let's go back to our routes here and I'll show you what we have. The one that we're looking for is one of these nested resources, this one right here. So we can do a post request, but let's add a new one for delete. And the address remains exactly the same, with the only exception is that now we're going to hit the destroy method. All right, does that make sense? So we are hitting slash questionnaire, slash the questionnaire ID, slash questions. And the browser is going to think that that's a post request. But as soon as Laravel picks it up, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute. This is a method of delete. Find me a route for delete, not for post. And so it will hit the destroy method. Let's go ahead and start working on that now. That's inside my questions controller. And let's add a new one here for destroy. Okay, we can use route model binding because we do have our questionnaire. So we can continue to use route model binding. We'll bring that in. We'll need our questionnaire because at the end, we're probably going to want to redirect somewhere and that's what we'll use it. And here's the meat and potato of this feature. How do we get rid of all of the answers for these questions? Well, first and foremost, how do we get the answers in general? If we have a questionnaire, how do we get the answers? Well, first of all, we need the question. Right now, the way we have this set up, I purposely kind of walked us down this path so I could illustrate a point here. Right now, we have no idea what question this button actually belongs to. Think about it. This button will look exactly the same in every single one of our footers. And I can prove to that. We'll come back here. We'll do a quick inspect on this and check out the address. Questionnaires, one questions. Okay, we'll go to the second one. We'll do the same thing. Questionnaires, one questions. And of course, you can only presume that this last one will be exactly the same. All right, so we need another little piece of data here. We don't have enough. We actually need the questions ID. Why don't we just tag it on at the end? Let's do slash, and then we'll tag it on right here. Now we do have access to question because we are inside this for each loop right here. So we can simply grab onto question and grab its ID. Okay, let's go back to the route. Let's go ahead and add that right here as a wildcard for a question. And now we can do something cool that we have never done. And that is that we could do double route model binding. You can do as many of these as you need, as a matter of fact. We haven't really talked about it, but we can simply go ahead and type hint app question and then accept a question. And then let me do this right here. So by adding this line, I no longer need to have that app. Okay, so we've got my question. So I can simply die and dump my question just to prove that it is working. We'll go back here. We'll hit refresh, delete question, and there it is. Now I have my questions. Okay, so I think now it's a little bit more clear how do we get the answers for this question. So let's go back to the question that I proposed to you right before we went on that rabbit hole to fix our problem. How do we get the answers out of this question? Well, we have the relationship, so we can simply just grab the answers. So at that point, yep, I would have four answers. Now, if you don't call it like so, if you actually call it with the parentheses, then we can actually simply delete them right afterwards. So we can say questions, grab all of your answers, we'll call it as a method though, and then we'll call the delete on that. And that's it. And that is how you delete all of the answer children's with this question. It will do the scoping for you automatically, so it won't delete all of the answers, it will simply be scoped to the answers that belong to this question. So with that taken care of, well, the rest is just a matter of deleting the question itself. So we can do that with question delete, easy as that. And then at the end of this, let's go ahead and redirect back to the questionnaire. So let's return a redirect to my questionnaire. And let's use that path, that nice little path that we created for ourselves. Does that make sense? We're gonna grab all of the answers. We're going to delete them. Then we're gonna delete the question itself and then we'll redirect back to the questionnaire. All right, let's give this a go. 
I wouldn't really want to delete this one, but to be honest, it doesn't really say anything, so why don't we get rid of it? Notice that we have three right now. If everything works, after this, we should have two. And sure enough, we just have the two. So we can add a new question here. We'll just add a bunch of gibberish. Add that question in. Now we have three again. And we delete that, and now it's gone. So it's as simple as that to go ahead and do that. And then the very last thing that I want to take care of is surveys would not be very useful unless you can find out how many people have chosen each of these answers. Right now, it just we just have choices, but it would be really nice to know, well, of the people that have taken your survey, these many people have chosen choice one or choice two or three or four. And I want to display it right here on the right as a percentage. So I want to say 25% have chosen this option, maybe 75% this option and then zero and zero so we will work our way towards that so there are some steps that we need to take care of first of all we need to know how many people have chosen a particular answer we also need to know how many people have answered the question because that's going to be the total in order for us to calculate a percentage we need to know how many people have chosen it and how many people have answered that question in total we need to divide those two numbers, and that's how we get the percentage. Let's tackle one at a time. The first one is how many people have chosen choice one? Of all the people that have taken the survey, how many have chosen choice one? Let's start with that. I'll close everything up, and let's open up the questionnaire controller. This is the view in question right now. So right now, I am eager loading my questions and answers. And I do have an answers ID in my responses. Let me refresh your memory on that. Let's go to the responses migration. Right here. Answer ID. So there is a reference there. And as a matter of fact, if I go to my survey response model, there is survey. But theoretically, this survey response belongs to an answer as well. So an answer can have many responses. All right. So let's create that relationship right now. We already have it set up on the database side. We just need to take care of it on the Laravel side. Let's go to my answer.php and let's add a new relationship here for responses. This is a simple has many. So return this has many survey responses. Okay, so what this will return is how many people have chosen this particular answer. Or really, it will give me all of its responses. I can call count on it and get that instead. So let's go ahead and start this right now. I will die and dump questionnaire right now. And let's go ahead and add to our load. Let's add those responses. So answers.responses. Let's see what that looks like. I'll go ahead and hit refresh. And now, of course, we've got the relationship for the question. And each one will have a collection of answers. Now, if there are any responses here, we are going to have them inside our answers. We'll open that up. And sure enough, we've got one survey response. So one person has chosen this particular answer. And here it is. And it was under survey number one, question number two. Okay, so how do we get the number for that? Well, it's actually quite simple because at that point, I can just call count. Let me show you what that would look like. Let me go into this view right here. Questionnaires slash show. And right down here, right after the answer, let's div this up and make a div out of it. We'll put that there and then we'll make another one. And this is going to be where we display how many people have actually chosen that. So we'll say answer. We'll use a new responses relationship. And we can simply call count on that. Okay, let's hit refresh. And there we go. So we've got the first part of the formula. One person has chosen that one. Let's take a new survey here. I'm going to do maybe two and this B section here. Let's add a dummy name and then some dummy email. All right. So now let's go back here. And sure enough, I've got one and I've got one. And then I've got zero, one, one, zero. Okay. Pretty cool, right? But now that's not enough for me to actually show a percentage because I don't know the total. I need to say, well, this is one out of two. It's easy for us to see it, but how do we write that in code? Well, we need to add another one of these responses relationship. Let me refresh your memory one more time. Let's go back to this create surveys responses migration. And we also have the question ID. So why don't we use that relationship to create a new relationship inside my questions where I talk about how many responses a particular question has. 
very, very similar to what I did with answer. In my question model, notice that I'm in here, let's add another simple has many relationship for responses. Same exact thing. Return this has many survey responses class. Okay, so what this allows us to do is now I can come back here. I'll leave that in there. I'll go ahead and maybe add a new one. So we'll say instead of using my answer, I can use my question. So I'll use my question, grab all of your responses and get me a count. Let's see if that gives us what we need. And there we go. Notice that this is two because one plus one equals two. So we have two, two and two. So now we have everything that we need to go ahead and calculate this percentage. And it's as simple as grabbing this count. I'll go ahead and wrap it inside parentheses. We'll put that count times 100. And then we'll go ahead and divide it by this, which is the total amount of answers like so. And with any luck, we'll have 50%, 50%, and then 50 and 50. All we would need to do at this point is just add the percent sign. But I said I wanted it right here on the right. We can use Flexbox for that. Let's turn this into a Flexbox container. That's going to be D flex and then justify content between. And there we go. 50%, 50%. Now this right now is working out pretty good, but this could be a long decimal. We want to avoid ever having big decimals. What we could do is cut this out and then let's do int val. It's a PHP function that basically turns any float into an integer. So it will never have any decimal places. We will never run into a situation where we have something very funky. Let's go ahead and take another survey here. I'll maybe choose this one, maybe choose this one. We'll put another dummy name, complete survey. And now we hit refresh. Now we have 66%, 33. Let me show you what that would look like if I got rid of this right now. And again, I just want to show you what we actually fixed. And there it is. You see this huge percentage here? That's not what we want. So now let's move it back using int val, which again is just integer value. And there we go. That fixes that for us. So now as a very final review, let's go ahead and do the entire flow. Let's create a new questionnaire, add some questions to it, and then take a survey. Here we go. Let's go back to the beginning. We'll go into home. Let's create a new questionnaire. Let's say rate your experience. Please be honest with us. Okay. So let's add a new question. How happy are you with your visit? How about that? We'll maybe do like a point system. We'll do like 10 and then maybe five and then zero and then maybe no answer. Just something crazy like that. And whoops, we actually ran into an issue. Division by zero. Whoops, that's because it doesn't have any responses. Okay, this is great actually because now I get to fix that. So let's go in here. The only way that we could display this is if this is greater than zero. That's actually pretty simple to fix. We'll go ahead and copy this and then let's do it as an if statement. So we'll say at if. So if you have any responses, then go ahead and do this. Otherwise, don't. And this should fix it for us. Let me fix my indentation. This should fix it for us. And there we go. So now we don't have anything here on the right, which makes sense. No one has taken our survey. Easy fix. Let's move on. Let's add another one and let's say rate your breakfast and we'll say 10 5 0 and maybe bad i'm just making this up it doesn't really matter we'll keep it simple like that so we've got two questions so how would this work well just like that we'll go back to home so now you have this shared url you would copy this address send it to somebody obviously do not copy this address this is for local development if this app was in production it would really work but right now, obviously, this wouldn't do anything. So that's just as a quick side note. This app would need to be deployed. But you would copy this address, send it to your friends, and then they would get into this page. Then they would do their rating. They love their experience. This is Victor. And this is Victor at coders, coderstape.com. And we'll go ahead and complete that survey. It says thank you. As another side note, you could make a nice thank you view for this. And then let's maybe take it one more time of somebody who did not have as good a time. And this is John Smith. This is John at smith.com. We'll complete that survey. And then let's take it one more time. This person had a really bad time. They don't want anything to do. 
And this is Jane Smith. This is Jane at Smith.com. We'll complete the survey. All right, so we've got some data in our database. We can now go back into our survey and we can now find out how well we're doing. And here it is. So how happy with you with your visit? Well, one person said 10, one person said zero, and one person said no answer. And then you can figure it out for rate your breakfast. So that is going to complete our final project. I hope you have enjoyed this Laravel 6 beginner course. And as always, there's even more content here on the channel that you can continue to learn from. So I suggest you log into coderstape.com. Go ahead and create your free account. That way you can keep track of all of the lessons that you have completed. And as always, all of those lessons are free. So go ahead and choose your next path and continue learning. And as a quick last note, don't forget to subscribe. Share the channel if you can. That way other people can find out about it. For Coder's Tape, my name is Victor. Thank you for watching.